All right, Jonah, on this part of the show, we look at one of the best scenes from your performance, in this case, Wolf of Wall Street. We're gonna watch it together and pause it and discuss the key moments in the scene. This is a great moment near the end where you're having lunch with Leonardo DiCaprio's character mm -hmm. and he has to tell you with a post-it note that he's wearing a wire. It's right. a very intense moment. Let's check it out. George, do you know how good it is to have you back in this office? It's not the same when you're gone. It's sad. For me, one of the keys to this incredible performance that you gave is Donnie's voice, which I know you really worked a lot at. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there's two different stories that are kind of cool about the voice. Uh, one is uh, Tim Mon Monick, who's our uh, acting and dialect coach, you know, who helped us with all that different accents and everything. He's a genius. Uh, when I first had the fake teeth in, I had a really horrible lisp. And so Tim said I had to talk with the teeth in for an hour and a half to two hours every day just to lose the lisp of, of speaking when I had them in. And since no one from my personal life would give that amount of time, obviously, <laughs> to me every day to like get into character, I would call different businesses as Donnie uh, for like an hour and a half, two hours a day. I would call this one Best Buy in Hawaii a lot of the time. And they would just stay on the phone with you forever? Just had fantastic customer service. And, <laughs> and the other story is during rehearsals, during the month and a half or two months of rehearsals with um, Scorsese and Leo and I, the three of us, I was doing the Long Island accent for Donnie, but I wasn't doing the really gravelly voice. And I was like, started doing it. And I was like, wow, I really like this, but I hadn't shown Scorsese and I was starting to shoot the next day. Oh. And so I get there and I'm in the makeup trailer and Spike Jones is in the film and he was there the first day of shooting. And so, so I said, Spike, can you listen to this voice and tell me what you think? And I started doing the accent with the gravelly voice and he's like, oh, that's, that's great. You gotta do that. And the first take, I just did it. And Scorsese never said anything to me about it. So I just kept doing it for the next six months. Well, thanks, Spike, for the praise. Yeah, thanks, Spike. Yeah, he, I know he really gave me the confidence to just go out. Because I was scared to just go ahead and do it. I'm sure. All right, let's see what happens here. Steve Madden, huh? I can't. I swear to God, I can't even think about it, you know? No. Every time I think about him, my, my blood boils. I can't even say his name. No. You know, it's like disgusting. I, I grew up with this guy, and he no. betrays me like that. Oh. Okay, at this point, is there kind of some double dealing going on in Donnie's mind? Is he, no. this, he's completely clueless as to what the situation really is, right? Yeah, he's really excited to see Jordan, and he's really upset that his friend um, Steve Madden from high school had double-crossed them both. And Donnie runs the company, and he's saying, you know, it's like, it was us, and now it's just me, and it's just so not as joyous. Yeah, well, it's all about to change. Do you ever, ever get back to you about that, um, about that, uh, that account? You know, you remember it was like four or five mil, something like that, right? We were supposed to kick back four or five mil, was it? Okay. This face I love. I mean, <laughs> because it's just processing this whole moment that's going on. You know when something really crazy happens and you first hear about it or it happens, you can't even comprehend that it's a real thing. Mm. So he's staring at it, and this is the last thing he would expect from his best friend and his, his partner, and as insane as he is, is very bright and understands that on the wire, he has to sound like he's having the conversation as if he doesn't know any of this. Right. He's trying to force a pleasant conversation about this stuff but he's feeling all these really awful feelings. Yeah, let's get going. So what else is, uh, how's Naomi and everything? She hates my guts. How's Ellie, good? She's still alive, so. Yeah. What do you like so much about the scene? You were telling me that this is one of your favorite scenes in the whole movie. It's my favorite scene I've ever shot in a movie. Uh, just not being able to say the things that you're feeling it was a, a great challenge and really fulfilling to get to do. It's a really powerful scene. Well done. Congrats, Thank you. Jonah. Thank you. All right, we've got one more quick segment with Jonah Hill on Fandango Frontrunners. Mm -hmm. 